Good evening. Whoa. Good comments from my last video. But <clears throat> sadly, I don't mean to be disrespectful to some of you viewers, but honestly, the penny doesn't drop for some still. But fortunately, there are a good number of you that are getting slowly the message that I'm trying to tell you. I'm doing it really just so that you don't have, you know, a misconception of life here, anywhere, in this particular case, the Philippines. But we talk, so many channels talk about budgets, expenses, everybody's expenses are different. But the message I'm trying to get over to you is that before you, that's you, sorry, you, I'm talking to, before you assess how much your, that's your expenses are, you have to factor in what you are prepared to live by. Now, no one can tell you if you want a five-star lifestyle here in the Philippines or you want a one-star or even a half-star. That's up to you. What I'm trying to get across to you is that, of course, if you can't cook yourself and you're living in a house with a Filipino who also can't cook, life can be somewhat challenging and you would probably find yourself eating out a lot or buying in more or maybe even relying on a mother nearby to help cook, or even employing someone. But if we're imagining that you at least can boil an egg, make some scrambled eggs, make some fried onions, make mashed potatoes, cook a steak, cook a chop, cook a fish, barbecue, then, oh, and boil vegetables or fry vegetables, we, we can go on. In other words, you can survive and you can cook for yourself. Not only will you be cooking for yourself in that case, but you may well be showing your wife, your girlfriend, how you put together a, a, del a delicious meal. Something maybe she hasn't considered. Because for many Filipinos, the staple diet is rice, and something else, rice and something else. That's why so many Filipinos are so slim, because they don't eat lots of carbohydrates, they don't eat lots of potato, they don't eat lots of fattening items. Sure, they have different cooking techniques, and as a result, some do get a little plump. But then the average Filipino, likes them a bit plump. Now, of course, you might be attracted to the, the slender Kylie Minogue look, those that are familiar with Australia. Um, but in reality, I still emphasize this fact that before you, the foreigner, entered their life, they had their own recipe, their own desire for food. They ate what they could afford. And in many cases, if you look at it, you would imagine that the first thing that strikes you when you first meet your lady is she often eats with her hands. She doesn't always eat with a knife and fork. Obviously, you can't cut up a steak, whether it's pork or beef. But generally speaking, when you're eating fish, dipping it in some kind of marinade and vinegar, or a side sauce, and a handful of rice. That's how they eat. So the food variety is still varied, but it's not the way you're used to. You're used to sitting at a table with a knife, fork, and a spoon, and maybe having a dish on the table so that you can help yourself to a second helping. For them, they're used to being, I should say, more refined simply because 
They don't have the money. They, unless even with one or two people in a family working, it still doesn't bring in what you and I might consider a reasonable income to live on. And therefore, when you come along, regardless of what you have, well, let's start at the top. 10,000 American dollars. There's some people out there that brag they've got that much to spend a month, and that's their expenses. The mind boggles. Half a million pesos on, on expenses a month. It's just crazy. But let's talk realistic. The average person maybe will say 12, 1500 American dollars per month. Just to keep it simple. You can live on that. You can have a good life. You can pay for your internet. You can pay for your power. Yes, you have to be careful how much you spend on rental. If you have to rent, if you're, I feel that if you are going to come to the Philippines, you should take more note of what is there free. What, and what I mean that by that is, it's not, it's not freeloading to go and live with the family, to live on a compound with the remaining parts of her family. She, first of all, is going to be happier with her family nearby because the family are people that she's grown up with, feels safe around, and all of her friends know their family members. So if you take her away and plonk her in the bush somewhere, sure, she's going to be impressed with a new home that you might want to build. But if you do that, you're isolating her from her family. Now, sometimes you might say that the girl or the woman wants that to happen. I just wonder whether they do or not. Um, maybe they feel by putting themselves away from their family, there's not going to be the constant request every day. Come on, daughter, you're living a good life. We want some of it too, which is only natural. You know, it's inevitable that she's going to want to help her mum and dad. She maybe wants to help her brother or sister too. Aunties may be a little bit on the peripheral. But just remember that if you can keep your costs down by staying for a period of time till you get to feel that you are truly self-sufficient here in the Philippines, why not stay with the family? You'll get to know them better. You'll get to understand how the, fa the family dynamics work. And more importantly, you might actually enjoy it. Okay, you, you might have experienced already family outings where everybody takes selfies of each other. And who's this strange person in amongst them but you, the foreigner? But that's part of the fun and experience of being part and joining part of a, fa a Filipino family. But back to my point that I'm trying to make is that if you're just coming to replicate your life that you've been used to overseas in the Philippines, you're going to spend probably more than what you would have had to in your own country. So what's the point? Why are you coming here? Are you just coming here for notches on your gun? Or are you coming here to seriously consider staying here for more than maybe a couple of years and then chickening out? Maybe the idea of taking your wife back to your own country might appeal to you. But it is also, you will also find it is wrought with danger. Danger in the sense that you're going to change her from who you thought she was. You know, no matter how you live your life, it's up to you. But I think that you really have to take into account the financialist aspect of your life anywhere in the world. Don't live outside of your own means. Try and keep a daily um, head on it, you know, like keep an eye on what you're spending. Because do you really need that? Do you, is it essential? Is it 
always important that you have the best? Is it always important that you must have the biggest still? Some areas may be. But what I'm saying is that don't be fooled by the feeling of being that sh knight in shining armour on his white horse coming to save them. Because they're already saved. They live their life in harmony and discomfort and despair and every day they face a challenge and you come along and sure you're going to change their life aspirations but just remember when you have a relationship with a Filipino and it goes pear-shaped not only do you lose your partner not only do you lose your soulmate or your wife or your girlfriend you lose the dreams that you both shared at the start I liken it to when I first came here when you see all these half-built houses partially constructed buildings I used to always think why do they why do they do that and then I soon discovered that nothing happens overnight here it's over a long period of time it means that somebody's working somebody's sacrificing their life here in the Philippines to make life better for those back home just like when we come here we come here but we bring our sacrifice with us we sacrifice with them we sacrifice in a sense our, our freedom we sacrifice our security and we sacrifice maybe our future and it's nothing to do with a particular person but it's the fact that we are not on stable ground anymore we don't have the things that support us through our life that we've been used to that our parents were used to and our brothers and sisters still experience here in the Philippines it's dog eat dog it's whatever they can achieve by whatever means we we sit there and we might judge them but who are we to judge somebody who is desperate somebody who takes opportunities that we might not see as moral but we try and do our best to make life as happy for everyone around us but just remember if it does go pear-shaped all of those dreams explode they go you know it might be finishing the driveway it might be putting new windows in the house it might have been painting the house it might have been tiling a bathroom again all those things will suddenly go on hold because when uncertainty enters a relationship the dreams go out the window they're put on hold often and definitely working at one's relationship is a hard task there's always someone out there ready to knock you ready to show you the door to tell you oh don't stand for that mate off you go but would you give up the dream that easy I suggest that most of you if you're honest with yourself I don't think you would and I think that condemning other people for trying is an unwise and an unfair criticism of them so let's try and be a little bit more understanding for those foreigners who come here and find themselves often living with the foreigner that they thought they were going to spend their time with in separate rooms maybe how many of you out there sleep in the same room as your wife how many of you enjoy the comforts of cl close close caress anymore how many of you can joke and still laugh with her or does she give you the cold shoulder just give it some thought because there are lots out there 
that contact me. And I'm aware of them. But they're honest people. And a lot of them are American. And I thank them for being honest with me. So that's my thought for this evening. Sorry to be the bearer of a little bit of doom and gloom, but it is a positive if you grab it, if you grab it by the horns and you ride it like a bull. Something like that anyway. You have a great evening and a great night and a great morning. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.